Target Strata Abernathy. Welcome to Cooking for Your Health. Today we're going to talk about winter squash and I'm going to make a few recipes with some winter squash but I wanted first to tell you how to pick them, how to buy them and what's available. Right here this is a butternut squash and this is pretty much what we're going to cook today. If you want to though you can substitute acorn squash which is kind of a neat little shape. When I was a kid, my mother used to cut them in half and she would stuff them with meat and stuffing, actually. It was really good. Um, and this is a spaghetti squash. You want to pick a squash that has is dull in color. You don't want it too shiny. If it's too shiny, it's been picked too early. You want the stem on the butternut. I don't know that it's as important in the acorn squash, but it probably is. Um, and they usually have them available on the spaghetti squash. Butternut squash is very sweet and it's full of vitamin A and C more so than the other winter squashes. The butter of the acorn squash is a little bit tougher skinned and it makes a real good serving bowl like my mom used to do. Spaghetti squash, when you cook it, and we'll cut open a butternut squash, when you cook it, you take a fork and you flake the flesh, and it kind of looks like spaghetti, hence the name. They're all really, really good for you. They have lots of vitamins and minerals, um, but I love butternut squash. It's my favorite. So I'm going to take this butternut squash that's been wiped off and washed off, and I'm going to show you how to cook it. Now, there are a couple of different ways. We're going to make some different recipes. When I was a kid, we always ate butternut squash with butter and brown sugar cinnamon on it. But there are other ways. I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this off. I sometimes cut this end off, sometimes not. And I'm going to take my knife. And this is not for the faint at heart, so it is hard. and I've split it. This is the flesh part and this is the seeds. We're going to take the seeds. I don't recommend trying to grow them unless you know what they've been pollinized, pollinated with. We got a very interesting cross of a zucchini and cantaloupe a few years ago so you know you, you can compost this. Um, I tend to cook seeds before I compost them so I don't get all kinds of interesting plants growing where I don't want them. The strings will not hurt anybody. When I do this, I generally use a spoon that has a little bit of a sharp edge simply because it makes it easier. Pumpkins and squash, winter squash, are from the New World. There's a wonderful book called Blue Corn and Chocolate and it's got wonderful recipes and information about the food from the New World. Now, to cook the butternut squash, there are a couple ways you can do it. One, you can cook it like this in a pan and you just place it in a pan. The other is, if you need to cook it more quickly, you can cut it up into sections and that is done just by cutting it. It's much easier when it can not roll around. You're going to cook this with a little bit of water in the stove or microwave or you can cook it on top of the stove with water. If you cook it on top of the stove you need to check it often or you will have smoke squash because the water evaporates quite quickly. So we're going to put this in the oven and last night I cooked one and I'm going to use it for the first recipe. Butternut squash with raisins. Two pounds butternut squash, one tablespoon butter, one tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons raisins. Now, when you cook it, with the peel on, peeling it is so much easier. For the other recipes I peeled some squash and it was rather difficult. Um, but 
the peel comes off quite easily. And you're just going to get off as much of the peel as you can. A few little pieces aren't going to hurt you. And as I said, it scoops out. My dogs love the peeling. And it's pretty good for them. Gives them some fiber and they get some vitamin A too. And they beg for it, so. Okay. You pour a little bit of the juice in, it won't hurt anything. Add some moisture. And for our first recipe, we're going to make it with raisins and Worcestershire. Get my potato masher. If you want this more creamy, you can put it through the food processor. But I kind of like it with some texture to it. Otherwise, it tends to be kind of like baby food. and That's not quite as interesting. I'm going to add one tablespoon of Worcestershire, which you can say as creatively as you want to. About a two to three tablespoons of raisins and some butter. I'm going to mash this in. I saw this recipe and I thought, hmm, something other than brown sugar and cinnamon, but yet interesting. And this will make a real interesting side dish. I think it'd be really good with pork. Slug it down a little bit in there. We're going to put this in the oven just till it's warm through. Okay? We're going to put this in the oven, and when we get back, we're going to do a butternut saute with some spinach in it. scary? Then log on to LOC.gov and see how much fun it can be. The Library of Congress and LOC.gov. You want to fight childhood asthma? Fight it with a bear. Fight it with a duck. Fight it with a wrench. Toss Teddy in the freezer to wipe out dust mites. Dry off bath toys and fix leaks to keep mold away. Discover other simple ways to prevent an asthma attack. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS or visit noattacks.org. Because no child should feel like a fish out of water. Welcome back. We are going to make a butternut saute, a butternut squash saute. Butternut squash saute. Four slices of bacon cut into one inch pieces. One medium onion chopped, about half a cup. Six cups butternut squash peeled and cut into one inch pieces. Half a teaspoon chopped fresh or eighth a teaspoon dried thyme. One eighth teaspoon pepper. Three cups firmly packed baby spinach leaves. Now the first ingredient we're going to use is four slices of bacon. And, you know, bacon is one of those foods that's mainly fat, but it also has a lot, a lot of flavor. So we're going to let that cook for just a few minutes, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about peeling a butternut squash. I peeled two or three squashes last night. And I'm going to tell you, you want to cut them down the middle and then cut small, cut small one-inch strips of the squash. Use a knife as opposed to a potato peeler or vegetable peeler to peel the squash simply because it's a little safer. And it will get it out a little bit better. 
some some of the reading I did said that if you um, microwave the squash for a minute or two, it's easier to peel. I didn't read that till after I peeled them, so I don't know. Okay. So we're going to fry this bacon until it's good and crisp and get some of the fat out of it. And I want to have the fat coat the pan. And then I'm going to add the onion. And if you notice my candle, the onion still, that is the best way to get rid of the onion gases so that you don't tear. Mmm, this smells good. Onion and bacon, two very flavorful things. And we want the bacon to be crisp and we want the onion to be tender. The other thing I, I, when I was reading, butternut squash is used in a lot of different things other than just like we do for Thanksgiving with the cinnamon and brown sugar. It stands up to stews. The people in Thailand use it for stews. The people in Africa use it in a stew. Um, you know, it's very high in nutrients and it's relatively inexpensive considering the amount of nutrition you're getting for the um, cost. Oops. I'm probably stirring this more. Normally I would take the bacon out, but I'm trying to save a little bit of time by cooking them both. And this is going to make a fairly large serving, quite a large number of servings. Ooh, doesn't that look good? Can you see it? it smells wonderful. Bacon can be used as a condiment, which is what this recipe does. There's just enough bacon in for some flavor. And it's the fat that you're using. So you're not using a hydrogenated fat. You're using a, a natural saturated fat which has a wonderful flavor. Now I'm going to add about six cups of butternut squash and I cut it into small pieces so it would cook more quickly. going to take about 10 minutes to cook till it's tender. I'm going to add just a little uh, bit of thyme. It's about a half a teaspoon and they said fresh but I like a lot of flavor in mine. And some pepper and I don't know that I'll ever measure pepper. It's a bit much. But we're going to put some in there. Nice fresh brown. And this is a different texture than I've ever seen. And it smells wonderful. We're all our mouths are all watering here. The last thing we're gonna do is add some spinach leaves on top. So we're really going crazy with the beta carotene, folic acid, um, vitamin C. And butternut squash has a good bit of iron in it too and the spinach has a good bit of iron. So the vitamin C and iron are going to help get that, um, get more of that into your body. I'm going to put the lid on it for just a second and it'll just take a second for the spinach to wilt. And yes this has a little bit of fat in it but it's not an exorbitant amount and the fat will help with your satiety and it has a flavorful fat as well. There, the spinach is wilting. It's a colorful dish. Bacon, onions, and spinach are oh, wonderful together. And the butternut squash adds some wonderful color. Let's give it to you so you can see it. Doesn't that look wonderful? We'll be tasting this after I finish our last recipe 
which will take just a, we'll be back in just a minute and we'll start doing that one. My name's Lisa, and in nine years I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. They've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit boosterseat.gov. Welcome back. The next thing we're going to make is our butternut squash with tomatoes and uh, cheese, which when I first looked at it, I thought, ooh, this is kind of interesting. Butternut squash baked with tomatoes and cheese. Two pounds butternut squash, about six cups. Two tablespoons butter, one tablespoon oil, eight green onions sliced, four tomatoes peeled and chopped. You can substitute a can of tomatoes, 28 ounce half a teaspoon thyme, four ounces or one cup grated sharp cheddar cheese, salt and pepper to taste. I have already sauteed the butternut squash with some green onion. You can use a regular onion if you don't have green onion. Um, the recipe called for two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of oil. You could almost cut that in half if you wanted to. And this is sauteed till it's tender. Now I do want to say I cut up the squash fairly small so that the pieces would have a lot of surface area to hit the heat and would cook quickly. Um, we also found that if you cook it and then let it sit for a little while, it kind of um, tenderizes beautifully on its own. Now I'm going to add a little bit of thyme. I think thyme is the new spice to go with the butternut squash from these new recipes I've found. Stir that up. I'm going to add some tomatoes. And this is just a can, a 28 ounce can of tomatoes, or you can peel your own. The recipe called for four tomatoes or a um, can of them. Ooh, this is colorful too. I like colorful dishes. They add interest. And we're going to put a little bit of pepper in it. I'm not going to add salt simply because the tomatoes have been canned with salt and you don't want to have too, too much salt in our diets. Now I'm going to take this, let me see if I can unplug, and I'm going to pour this, we hope, into a baking pan. Ooh, that didn't do too badly. And I'm going to kind of mix it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put this with some cheese on top. This is a really good vegetarian dish. Or you can have it with some type of fairly bland meat. You don't want to have too, too much um, flavor with this because I think it's going to stand up on its own. I'll sprinkle just a little more thyme on top to kind of add some interest. I'm going to put this in the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt. And doesn't that look lovely? It smells good too. 
when we come back we're going to look at all of the recipes that we've made and we're going to be able to taste them um, and I, I assure you these all smell wonderful and look really good too nutrition wise they're good too breastfed are less likely to develop ear infections, respiratory illnesses, and diarrhea. Babies were born to be breastfed. Hi, I'm Louise from Sesame Street. Hey! I'm introducing Elmo to some healthy new snacks. Delicious fruit. Healthy habits start early. In fact, studies suggest that children form these habits even by age three. It's the small steps that you take that make a real difference for you and your children. Oh, may Elmo introduce Louise to some healthy food? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Broccoli, this is Louise. How do you do? Fine. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I have gotten everything out of the um, oven and it looks so good. We have here our saute with a little bit of bacon and some uh, spinach which just it smells so wonderful. I'm, I'm very excited about that. This is a much simpler one. It's the butternut squash with Worcestershire and um, raisins which that sounds like a, a very simple thing to do and it's not super super sweet so it would be an interesting accompaniment to many foods. And then this I think is the piece de resistance. Um, my French is not good but it is um, with tomatoes and cheese and it just looks and smells so wonderful. I do want to say that when I do this again, I'm going to use a white cheese on top because I think that would add another color. And I think we eat with our eyes as much as we do our palates and that would just look wonderful. I get to taste. So I'm going to have a little bit of each. I'm going to start with our first recipe. Just a smidge of each. And, you know, you... When you make these things, you have to have an open mind, but realize that butternut squash can be more than just brown sugar and cinnamon. Let's see the first one. Mmm! Neat texture. The sweet of the raisins really offsets the Worcestershire. Sorry, I can't say that today. The spinach one. Nice flavor, nice texture. And then the cheese and tomato, which I never would have thought to put together. Oops. If I get it together. Mmm. They are all good. And we are all here, the crew, waiting to eat. So, with that, I will say goodbye and enjoy cooking. Thank you. For more information or to download the recipes from this or any Cooking for Your Health show, go to www.buncombecounty.org, click on Departments, then Health Center, then click on the Nutrition Division. There you will find a link to Cooking for Your Health. If you don't have Internet access, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Nutrition Division, Buncombe County Health Center, 35 Woodfin Street, Asheville, North Carolina, 28801, and I'd be happy to send you recipes or answer your questions.